Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And our primary focus is on you and me because we are talking about health and nutrition. And in order for me to give you a presentation on how to accomplish a better degree of health, well, I do a lot of research. So I find out things that I didn't know either and that I want to share them with you. You can listen to my radio show every Saturday and Sunday locally in the Green Bay, Wisconsin market. But you can also listen to my radio show live anywhere around the world, which is, I would say, quite, a, quite an accomplishment because wherever you are, you have to change your times to be on the same time we are here in the Central Standard Time in the USA. But you can also go to the radio show section on the website and you can listen to any of the radio shows at your convenience. Just pull up a radio show and listen. A lot of new ideas and new topics. Also, while you're there, I write a newsletter every week and send out the newsletter on Friday. So if you're interested in reading more of the newsletters, you can subscribe and it'll be sent to your email address every Friday. And they're also archived on the website in the e-newsletter section. And there's a lot of other good topics as well, not only on my TerryTalksNutrition.com website, where you can subscribe to my newsletter and listen to past radio shows, but you can also ask me questions. If you've got something on your mind regarding health and nutrition, or a supplement you're taking, I would be happy to give you my best answer. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Terry Talks Nutrition. And you can also go to YouTube. I have a channel on YouTube, and it's called youtube.com slash Terry Talks Nutrition. And also now I have teamed up with Dr. Lynn Wagner, a medical doctor. So now you can listen and watch the Terry and Dr. Lynn show on TerryTalksNutrition.com on the website. Or you can go to any one of your favorite podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Listen Notes, Player FM, Audible, Deezer, and Podcast. These are all areas that you can listen to our podcast with Terry and Dr. Lim. We have a really good topic today for our featured topic. We're going to talk about melatonin. Before I get there, and of course, I also we have a lot of other topics too, not just melatonin, but we're also going to talk about andrographis and grapeseed extract in reducing cancerous colon tumors. We'll talk about Lyme's disease. We'll talk about the nutrient of the day, a very special form of calcium, calcium lactate. A new study on saffron for sleep. But you know, in the beginning of this year, like I think all of us, we make resolutions, right? We make resolutions the 1st of January. Hey, this is what I'm going to do in this year of 2021. And you know, by February, 50% of those people that made resolutions have given up. You never give up. That's one way to accomplish great things. Be persistent. Be tenacious. Never give up. Yeah, you'll fall down, but get up again. That's the way we make, sometimes, what we think are miracles in life. 
So one of my resolutions was to write 10 books on health and nutrition. Now I know you can listen to these topics, but I can only get a small part of each topic, like kind of a summary. But not all the details, which are really, really important as well. So I wanted to write books, so I developed and opened up a new company, a publishing company, to write books and to sell those books on various websites. So I wrote a book on type 2 diabetes, and I hooked up with some of the best medical doctors and scientists around the world to write these books. So I wrote a book on type 2 diabetes, which is a new break-free topic because it features a herb called Hintonia. And you know, type 2 diabetes is not a disease. It's optional. It's based on how we live, on our lifestyle choices. You don't have to take drugs. Now, I'm not telling you to go off your drugs. If you're taking drugs, before you go off your drugs, talk to your doctor. But there is really no need to ever take a drug for type 2 diabetes. Maybe one person out of 100 might. So that's why I want you to talk to your doctor. But it's a blood sugar problem. Why blood sugar? Well, because we eat so much sugar. Way beyond the ability for insulin to manage. I also wrote a great book on fight disease with a powerful natural seed. Grape seed extract. And how grape seed extract can prevent and reverse cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and more. I wrote this book with Dr. Ajay Goyle, a cancer researcher at City of Hope Hospital Clinic, Cancer Clinic in Los Angeles. I wrote another book called Relieve Pain Without Side Effects. And I wrote this book with Dr. Jan McBaron, a medical doctor who worked on a variety of alternative medicines. And she and I came together to write the book Relieve Pain. Actually, you could say Stop Pain Without Side Effects. And one of the articles today we're going to be talking about is andrographis. And andrographis is, a, is an herb that I absolutely highly respect. And I wrote a book on andrographis. And I can't tell you in an hour or two hours or three hours all the information on andrographis because it is the most natural answer to all diseases. For cold and flu, it is unbelievable. Upper respiratory tract infections, joint pain, arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, liver disease, cancer, and much, much more. And then I also wrote a book, which we'll be talking about today, melatonin. Many people think that melatonin is just for sleep. And many people say, well, I sleep, I, I'm okay, I sleep, I sleep well. I don't need melatonin. Or some people say, I, I tried it and it doesn't work. But if you read the book on melatonin, you're going to understand why everyone, everyone needs melatonin every day. And we're not getting it through our natural process of it being released from the pineal gland in the brain. And as we get older, we become more deficient in melatonin. Melatonin is for more than just sleep. It's really the answer, the anti-aging answer, immune health, cancer, and much, much more. In fact, it can knock out a wide range of viruses, including COVID-19. It can improve immune function, especially in the elderly. It can lower cholesterol. 
improve blood sugar levels, normalize blood pressure, protect and prevent healthy cells from damage by chemotherapy. It prevents a variety of cancers, especially hormone-related cancers like breast cancer and prostate cancer. It can overcome resistance to the benefits of chemotherapy. It can relieve irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. It's a very powerful anti-inflammatory, very powerful antioxidant. These books, and I, I have one more coming up within another few weeks, on how to relieve anxiety. And I'll continue to write until I have my 10 books done this year. And then I'll decide what I want to do next year because I want to continue to write to help you understand more on how you can do some things naturally. Do you know that food is the most powerful medicine? We have lived two to three million years on food. You can look at our past ancestors, cavemen, you might say, that ate a healthy diet. And just in the last 100 to 150 years, food manufacturers have used primarily many ingredients that cause disease, cause inflammation, that cause oxidative damage to our cells and cancer. There's more inflammation caused by the food we eat and many people are taking pills to reduce the inflammation. Heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, weight gain, osteo and rheumatoid arthritis are all conditions caused by inflammation. And the American diet, the typical American diet, which is consumed by 95 to 98 percent of all Americans, the diet is highly inflammatory. So you are continually making inflammation in your body, causing diseases, causing pain, causing joint pain, causing arthritis, causing both forms of arthritis, osteo and rheumatoid. And then we take drugs or natural supplements, hoping to reduce the inflammation. And 90% of the inflammation can be reduced with just diet alone. Now, you might want to take some supplements to get rid of the other 10%, or improve even more. But 90%. So, you're on a diet, American diet, the standard American diet, which is a SAD diet, SAD, standard American diet, causing inflammation. And all we need to do is change the diet to a diet that is anti inflammatory. The three most common foods that are causing inflammation are grains, flour, excessive carbohydrates from grains, wheat, barley, oatmeal, whatever. And omega-6 fatty acids from vegetable oils like safflower seed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil, peanut oil, the primarily good oils would be avocado oil, macadamia nut oil, olive oil. I primarily use olive oil because it is so, I think it's such a powerful medicine. Beyond food, it's a medicine. But all our food is our medicine. But we're eating the wrong food. The American diet is primarily carbohydrates and sugar. So, carbohydrates, grains, sugar, vegetable oils are causing inflammation. 
when we consume oils, omega-6 fatty acids versus omega-3 fatty acids, we should have an omega-6 and a, to omega-7, excuse me, to omega-3, about one to one. And probably no more than two or three omega-6 to a one omega-3. But the American diet has brought up such a consumption of omega-6 fatty acid oils that we are, depending on what statistics I see, anywhere from 10 times to 30 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Omega-6 is highly inflammatory. Our bodies are riddled with inflammation. Inflammation causes pain, causes heart disease, causes all of our diseases. 98% of all of our diseases is caused by inflammation. Oxidative stress and the ensuing inflammation. Our food is killing Americans more than any other factor. And 90% of our health is based on the food we eat or the food we don't eat or the food that we should eat and we don't. Only 10% of our health is based on exercise. You can't out-exercise a bad diet. If you've got pain and inflammation and you're running, you're going to have more pain and inflammation. And if you're running and eating a bad diet, it doesn't, you have no benefit. You might take off some weight, but you're not going to improve your health. You're going to be slimmer, but it's still unhealthy. Doesn't make sense. That's why I don't believe exercise is a big factor until you change your diet. Two diets that stand out that can help you. So I'd like to have you examine your health, examine what you're doing, and maybe make some changes. So the ketogenic diet, and you can go to the website ketogenicdietresource.com or dietdoctor.com. The, the ketogenic diet is extremely valuable for someone who is really seriously sick. If you have MS, Parkinson's disease, cancer, ketogenic diet works extremely effectively and you will get significant benefits. But there will be a time when you are healthier and maybe you don't need such a severe restriction in carbohydrates. The ketogenic diet is protein and fats. Very, very little carbohydrates. Down to about 20 grams a day. Where the American diet is about 300 to 500 grams of carbohydrates. You can be somewhere between 75 and 150 grams of carbohydrates and be healthy. As long as they come from fruits and vegetables and not grains. Grains are not healthy. We don't have time to go into that subject today, but believe me, flour and grains and anything made like pasta, bread, crackers, cookies, whatever, they're not healthy. There is no healthy grain. And most of them contain gluten, which is a factor that affects every function in the body. Eliminate gluten and you're going to see a major change in your health. Maybe occasionally have a, gl a gluten-free grain like rice or some of the other grains that are gluten-free. 
if you can just about give up grains and eat fruits and vegetables for your carbohydrates, you're better off. So, for those that are relatively healthy and can't afford to take on the restriction of carbohydrates, like in the ketogenic diet, then I would recommend the paleo diet. P-A-L-E-O, paleo diet. And you can look up on Google, just paleodiet.com. You'll find a tremendous amount of information. There's more science based on the paleo diet than any other diet. So food is your medicine. So if you want to buy these books that I talked about in the beginning of the program, you can go to Terry Naturally Vitamins.com. You can buy the books there. Or you can go to Amazon and buy the books there. Now the books are just eight ninety five. I'm not making any money on them. I don't want to make money on them. I want you to have more information so that you can be healthier. I was a basket case when I was younger and very, very unhealthy. And people changed my life. I hope I am helping to change someone else's life as well. I'm just trying to pay it forward. And once in a while, we'll run a special on Amazon. The books are just 99 cents. I just want you to be more informed to make better choices so that you have better health. So let's go to our featured topic today. Melatonin. Now, I know most people have heard of melatonin and they probably would say, it's for sleep. Yes, it's for sleep and a thousand other things as well. The majority of melatonin is secreted in the brain or by the brain through the pineal gland and only at night. As soon as darkness comes on, and that's why people think it's for sleep, because it's used at night. It regulates the circadian rhythm of the body and keeps a regular, healthy, sleep-wake cycle. So we secrete melatonin Starting around dusk, sunset. So, our ancestors, our cave dwelling ancestors, didn't have light. So, when dark came on the earth, melatonin went into action. And it has Well, in fact, 28,000 studies have been done on melatonin. The most studies done on any natural substance, and I like to call melatonin the multifunctional molecule. There is a huge debate between scientists as whether or not it is a hormone. Everybody believes it is a hormone except some of the top scientists who have been studying melatonin for 30, 40 years. Hormones are made by one gland. Like thyroxin is produced by the thyroid with help of other nutrients to produce thyroxin. But we can find melatonin in every living substance, animal, vegetable, plant, algae, fungus, frogs, snakes, and foods. Some of the top foods are like cherries, walnuts. So we have melatonin throughout our environment. That does not behave like a hormone. So many scientists believe it is a molecule and we should have it every day, regardless if you sleep well or not. 
But because it, it goes into activity at night, too many people do not get enough nighttime activity. So even a very small exposure to light can inhibit and interrupt melatonin production. And when people can't sleep, they're in bed, can't sleep. So what do they do? Get up, turn on the TV, or get a phone and start scrolling through uh, Facebook or whatever. The light of the phone, the light of the TV, once it interrupts melatonin, melatonin does not go back into activity again. So sitting in a brightly lit room or looking at a bright screen before bedtime can reduce the time period of melatonin by the entire night or at least by 90 minutes. Exposure to light during the normal sleep time can reduce melatonin levels by 50%. Plus the aging process. Hold it there, my friends. I have a lot to talk about melatonin and many other topics yet today. And we're at the bottom of the hour. That means we only have a few seconds before we take a break. But after the break, I'll come back and talk more about melatonin. And I can tell you, melatonin will change your life. It is that important to the health of our body. It is not just for sleep. 28,000 studies. 10,000 of those studies were on sleep disorders. 18,000 studies were on cancer, antiviral, upper respiratory tract infections. So stay where you are. I'm Terry Naturally. We'll come back right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally. We're here at the second segment of our program. We're here to the top of the hour. This is TerryTalksNutrition.com. Go to the website. You can listen to the radio show, subscribe to the newsletter, and a lot of other good information. But our topic today is melatonin. What does melatonin do for you and what can it do? Everything. Literally everything. Children who are between the ages of one and three produce a normal level of melatonin. After the age of three, it starts going down extremely rapidly. Even a six-year-old can use melatonin. Some will get a partial amount of melatonin produced by the pineal gland. But as we get older, 40 and above, 40 to 100, we're producing practically no melatonin. So it would be highly beneficial for everyone to take melatonin. It's like vitamin D. We need it every day. We need all the vitamins every day. And scientists have proven we need melatonin every day. Now, I've looked at 28,000 studies. I have not read 28,000 studies. But I read several thousand studies. And I am convinced that I will take melatonin the rest of my life. We can't depend on it being secreted because we don't live in dark at night. We have lights everywhere. And we stay up with lights everywhere. We, we, we watch late night TV. We go to bars, restaurants, till late at night. We might get home one, two in the morning. Half of our sleep, wake cycle is already gone. We can't produce too much melatonin when we go to bed too late and we've been in light for the entire time before we go to bed. So now here are some of the many multi-functions of melatonin. 
It's an anti-inflammatory. Beginning the program, I told you about inflammation. I told you about an anti-inflammatory diet. The ketogenic diet and the paleo diet are both anti-inflammatory. It just behooves us to follow anti-inflammatory processes. It reduces 98% of all our disease. And food can reverse, prevent, and stop diseases better than drugs. It's an antioxidant. Anti-cancer. It regulates the metabolism. It fixes the sleep dysfunction and sleep disorders. Yes, it does sleep. That's only one little facet of what melatonin really does. It regulates the circadian rhythm. It keeps the heart healthy and prevents cardiovascular disease. It prevents and regulates cancer. And I'll talk about one of those studies soon. We are working on a study right now on melatonin and andrographis individually and together in a colon cancer study with three other drugs. This should be wrapped up in the next few months and then published, and then after publication, depending on the results, I can share that with you in some coming show. Now, we talk about the immune system, right? We talk about vitamin C for the immune system, and there are four vitamins and two minerals that are extremely valuable for the immune system. But it's melatonin that is critical for the immune system and immune function. The Cleveland Clinic reported that after screening nearly 27,000 patients and their use of melatonin was associated with a 28% reduced risk of contracting the COVID virus. Not only vitamin D, not only the four vitamins and two minerals, but melatonin. And now melatonin is in almost every protocol of the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that are required to reduce the risk of COVID-19, the COVID virus. And melatonin is in every protocol that I have seen from the alternative physicians that are recommended to their patients. Women with low melatonin levels were 15 times more likely to have breast cancer than women with high melatonin levels. And this was a clinical trial. Women were actually in a clinical trial where half of the women were on melatonin, half were not. And the women with the very low levels of melatonin were 15 times more likely to contract breast cancer than women with high melatonin levels. And low melatonin levels may be why older adults and night shift workers are more likely to experience chronic health conditions including cancer. Shift workers, women working in areas of where they are changing their schedule of shifts or working night shifts only, have a higher risk and a higher, higher level of breast cancer and the same with men for prostate cancer. I would recommend highly to add melatonin to your dietary protocol. And this is not all. Type 2 diabetes. When individuals are on melatonin, taking melatonin as a supplement, because as we get older, we get less. Our body can't produce it. As we get older, we don't run as fast. 
As we get older, we don't digest as well. Everything slows down. But with sufficient melatonin. Type 2 diabetes. It reduced A1C levels 18%. In the inflammation of gingivitis. Periodontal disease. With melatonin, it indicated a 64% improvement in gingivitis in people with periodontal disease. In ADHD, improvements in sleep of those patients experiencing ADHD, their improvements were found in 88% of patients. Behavioral problems were improved in 71% of patients and a better mood and less depression in 61% of patients. And this was reported in children as well treated with melatonin. Fatty liver, which is now called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Years ago, alcoholics had the most common liver disease based on the amount of alcohol they drank. It caused liver damage and fatty infiltration in the liver and liver disease. Now today we have non-NON, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, not caused by alcohol, but caused by sugar. We're eating too much sugar. Even children, 18% of children have fatty liver disease. Children, which was once a disease in alcoholics only. So in fatty liver, 40 patients with fatty liver experienced a 36% reduction in inflammatory C-reactive protein, CRP. 21 of these patients out of the 40 saw liver fat, the levels of that liver fat, return to normal after just three months of treatment. There is no drug today to treat fatty liver disease. A year ago, I saw a report in a drug magazine that fatty liver disease was the top priority for drug companies to come up with a drug for. Natural ingredients are far more effective. Even just after three months, So how do you use melatonin? Well, first of all, melatonin has a very short half-life. That means when you take melatonin, half of it is used up in 35 to 45 minutes. The short half-life, the half-life means 50% will be used up in a certain period of time. Some ingredients, it's a 12-hour half-life. So half of the ingredient will be used up in 12 hours. But unfortunately, melatonin has a very short half-life of around 35 to 45 minutes. The half-life is the time required to reduce in the body by half. So the best way to take melatonin is with a substance that's called sustained release. So it increases melatonin levels over the course of the night. You're getting almost a full night release of melatonin. Five to seven hours of sustained release. So the best time to take melatonin is when it turns dark. When it's too dark to see without lighting is when our melatonin is secreted 
by the pineal gland. Now that's why it helps for those who can't sleep because that is another healthy benefit of melatonin. Not the only one. Most people think melatonin is just for sleep. It is not just for sleep. It's for regulating your whole body metabolic function. And it's not a sedative. It just tells your body it is time to get ready for rest. Dark. So it is a signal that it's time to go to bed. But people bypass that. They turn on the lights. And instead of going to bed at 7.30 or 8 o'clock when it's dark, they go to bed at midnight or 1 in the morning. And then you wonder why they're sick. First of all, they're eating a bad diet. They're not exercising. They might be drinking too much, smoking too much, staying up too late. And they have all the, well, I can't sleep because I've got so much pain. I can't sleep. My joints hurt. I can't rest. Every time I turn around, I hurt. What are we doing wrong, folks? We're doing something wrong with everything. We're not getting enough rest. We're not getting enough sleep. We're eating a bad diet. And then we're taking pills. Not unusual for a lot of people taking 5, 6, 7, and 10 prescription drugs a day. So melatonin tells the body it's time to go to sleep. That's why it's called a sleep aid. And helps start the winding down process of the body. Kids ages 6 and up, they would take about a 2.5 milligram tablet. And for adults, I would recommend a 5 milligram and a 10 milligram or somewhere between 5 and 10. Uh, What I do personally, I sleep like a baby. I sleep extremely well. I do go to bed early because I get up early. I'm usually up by 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Uh, by the time I take my little girl, Bella, Bella, my little Australian shepherd, out to potty and uh, you know get ready to go to work and have breakfast, uh, and I'm in the office by 5 o'clock. So I get up early. So uh, I don't want to stay up late. I need my 7 to 9 hours of sleep. So I take a 5 milligram chewable tablet. That is fast acting. But it's going to be used up really quickly. That's why a lot of people say it doesn't work. Then I still take at the same time as the 5 milligram, I take a 10 milligram sustained release. And that sustained release is released over 5 to 7 hours. So you get a full night coverage of melatonin. Now, maybe I covered some of this too quickly. And maybe I didn't cover enough. But if you want more information, and I really truly believe that if you read my book, you would, I think you would start taking melatonin the next day. And my books are not hard to read. They're very friendly. They're easy to read. And it's a short read. They're only about 80 to 100 pages. You can probably read one in a day. So look for my book called Wake Up. Melatonin is for more than just sleep. As an e-book or a paperback, you can get it on Amazon, amazon amazon.com. You can get it at terrynaturallyvitamins.com. And in my book, I explain how melatonin is the answer, answer to many areas of the good health, of your good health, and goes far beyond only sleep. 
So look for my book. Wake Up, Melatonin is for More Than Just Sleep. And you can also look for my other books to help you live a thriving, healthy life. Simply search, search for my name, Terry Limeron. I call myself Terry Naturally because I've been in the business for 50 years and everybody knows me by Terry Naturally. But my last name is L-E-M-E-R-O-N-D, Terry Limeron. And you can look for it in the book sections on Amazon.com or at TerryNaturalVitamins.com. After you read the book on melatonin or any other one of my books, you can have more health with changing your diet to an anti-inflammatory diet, to an antioxidant diet, which the ketogenic diet is, and the paleo diet is. Both are highly effective. And then add the supplements that you feel that after you've researched what you think you need. Now I told you about Andographis. I wrote a book on Andographis. That's one of my books that I've already published. Uh, there are five books already published. One more coming out within the next month or two. So I have four more to go the rest of the year. I'm ahead of schedule. But I wrote a book on Andographis. And this is a study I want to share with you. A study of Andographis and grape seed extract, commonly referred to as OPC. It stands for oligomeric proanthocyanidins. OPC, against colon cancer. One of the most common forms of cancer, the third most common and most deadly. But if caught early and treated correctly, it is very easy to help eliminate the cancer of the colon. So here's some new research. Andrographis and OPCs. This was a study done against colon cancer. Researchers at Baylor University in Dallas, Texas, and City of Hope Cancer Center in Los Angeles treated colon cancer cells including chemotherapy-resistant colon cancer cells, with the herb andrographis and the key compounds of grapeseed extract called oligomeric proanthocyanidins, just referred to as OPC. They're from grape seeds, not the oil. I hear that all the time. How much oil should I take? It's not in the oil. It's in the seed. And it comes from the Chardonnay wines. The seeds are not used when they produce the white wine. The seeds are used when they produce the red wine. There's, I think there's a slight advantage to the red wine over a white wine. My personal preference. I like red wine. Now these are the seeds. Not oil. But the seeds. This was a study done. Individually. Testing the grapeseed extract against colon cancer cells. Or testing the endographis against the colon cancer cells. And then together. They also treated colon cancer with both natural medicines singly and combined. The results, while each was effective on its own, Andrographis was as e was effective, more effective than the drug. And the drug that's commonly used is called 5-FU. While each was effective on its own, when they combined in another study, Andrographis and the OPCs from grapeseed extract was even better. Now, drugs can't come close to reducing cancer cells as herbs can. 
especially when they're high quality, the right kind, and they've been studied to prove it. You can't say this is for every grapeseed extract and for every, every gravis out there. There are no two herbs alike. They are different because of the processing, where they were picked, what part of the plant that was used, a lot of things going into making a natural, high-quality extract. Now, in this study, the combination reduced, that means the combination was andrographis and OPC from grapeseed extract, reduced cell proliferation, which means an increase in the number of cancer cells. It reduced the number of cancer cells, reduced cancer by 90%, 90. In an animal model, using animals, the combination reduced tumor volume by over 90%. They also did the same kind of study, but using cancer chemotherapeutic drugs. And they reduced tumor volume by 10%. 10%. That was the best it could do. So even if you are taking chemotherapy and the doctor wants you on 5-FU, the doctor wants you on drugs, and you might say, okay, I'm, I'm all, I'll, I, I'll, I'll go on drugs. But when you take andrographis and or grapeseed extract, it makes the drug far more effective on a very small dosage so it reduces the toxicity of the drug it makes the drug far more effective and you're getting a very supportive platform with andrographis and grapeseed extract this is a combination that is extremely valuable for reducing colon cancer cells, and actually reducing those tumors in the colon by over 90%. I mean, this is some unbelievable research. From what I've heard from the scientists at City of Hope, you know, oncologists, cancer-treating doctors, cannot use anything to treat their patients but what has been approved by the AMA, American Medical Association. So they use drugs, surgery, radiation. But now the hospital has approved a very small study, but this is a, this is a start. Ten patients are being chosen to be, to be treated with cancer drugs, but also andrographis and OPC. This is a clinical study, the first ever that I have seen, and it's being approved by the hospital. It's being approved by a combination of physicians and regulating how this is going to be done. But this is the start to waking up doctors, oncologists, to combined nutrients, herbal extracts, with their medication. This is huge. The doctors there are extremely excited. A combination of andrographis and OPCs from grapeseed extract being far more effective than drugs. 90% effective for reducing tumor volume in colon cancer. That, my friends, I'm all out of time, so I'll be back here tomorrow, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Central Standard Time on Sunday. Join me again. We always have more information to bring you, and I hope it's exciting to you and rewarding and beneficial. So say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world, and God bless you, my friends, and God bless America.